Greetings Glitter Gang. I recently watched a video by the YouTuber Jazza, J-A-Z-Z-A. And in it, he bought every kind of alcohol marker in the world he could find, basically, that would ship to Australia. And I think he said he spent something like $16,000 on alcohol markers. And he did like a March Madness bracket of all the markers he bought. And at the end, it came down to these markers, by this company Ohuhu and Copic Sketch Markers. Copic Sketch Markers won, which is unsurprising. They are the most expensive markers in the world. They are um, considered to be the best markers in the world in terms of alcohol markers. Um, so it's not a surprise that they won, but it was a surprise that they were up against not another, because he did all of the Copics. So Copic Chow got their own line. Copic Original got their own line. Copic Sketch got their own line. So they didn't go at the end head to head with another Copic. And they were up against these markers. These markers cost about a dollar each. Copics cost about eight dollars each. So I was super curious. So let me show you. Let me get my Copics to. All right. So these are my Copics. They are in a um, custom marker holder that fits inside of an Expedite um, that Monica and I designed together and she sells them. That's Monica. She's in the chat now. Um, Pear Tree Treasures is her store. So uh, the marker thingy, I know. They're in our marker thingy. So this is the Copic Sketch Marker holder. And when you put it in the Expedite, you put it in like this. So the markers are on their sides, which is the way that you are supposed to store Copics. All right, so in the Ohuhu, they come in this bag. So um, they come like this. Now, right off the bat, I will say this bag is probably not the best way. And they also come with this thing, which is for you to put behind the paper you're coloring on so you don't bleed to the next page. So this is in the bag as well. All right. So the way they came, they came just thrown in the bag any which way. So um, I kind of grouped them into color groups as best I could, but it's just four holes. So they're all kind of just hanging out, you know? So, all right, but let's talk about packaging. So with packaging with the Ohuhu markers, um, they are round. Okay. They have their color name and color number on the end on both ends. They do not have their color name on the barrel. So you would have to look at an end to see which color it is. They do have these anti-roll breaks on the markers. So they, even though they are round, they won't roll around your desk and drive you crazy. That's why Copics are oval. So they won't roll around your desk. Um, if you've ever wondered why they're that shape. Um, I will say that the packaging um, does feel and look a little cheaper on the Ohuhu markers versus the Copics. But again, we're talking about a $1 marker versus an $8 marker and packaging is where you can save the most money. Um, one thing I'm curious about is how well the end matches the actual color we get because with other cheap markers, that's part of the reason Copics are so expensive is that this plastic is specially designed dyed to be the exact color of the ink and that's apparently a very complicated and expensive process um so with a lot of cheaper markers these don't really match like perfectly um but we'll see we'll see we'll see um and then i also got their skin tone pack so up here you see my this is my copic skin tones um and then here are the Ohuhu skin tones. It seems like Ohuhu's skewing lighter overall um, than, and they did, they did send another one of these plastic sheets. So um, I have two of those. 
They do seem to skew lighter, but that all depends on how accurate the en these ends are. So if we look at the, if we look at the sheet, it does kind of, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not totally light, but it does seem like I have a little bit more um, in the, um, in the Copics, more, more variety. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to take out all these plastic things. So now let's, let's color something. Do you want to color something with the Copics first or with the Ohuhu first? Well, if you want to do the Copics first, do type a C in the chat. And if you want to see the Ohuhu markers first, type an O in the chat. I don't know if Ohuhu is how it's pronounced, but I mean, I have no idea how it's pronounced. So, <laughs> and I'm just going to put the oh, uh, Copics to the side because I will literally die of shock if you guys want to see the Copics first. Okay. So, what a surprise the Ohuhu are winning. <laughs> now, um, caveats, I'm not that great at coloring. Like, I like coloring, but I'm not that good at it. So, don't consider this to be like a marker tutorial. You know what I mean? Like, best marker practices. <laughs> Oh, who is much more fun to say than Copic for sure. Okay. I lost my lid after, oh, here it is. I don't know how thin this paper is, so I'm going to protect my mat. And um, all right, here we go. So um, let's, oh, should I put their plastic underneath to protect my uh, basil mat? Theirs is kind of, mm, no, I'll just use the basil mat. You know what? If it gets, it's already kind of dirty and gross. So I'll, I'll live. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to move a little bit more towards the right so that the shadow from the bag isn't covering the whole thing. And then um, let's decide on where the sun is in this photo. So, or in this coloring book. So that will tell us where shadows, how shadows go. So like, for example, if this is the sun, Okay, if this is the sun, then we'll have the most highlights here and the most shadows here. If this is the sun, we'll have the most highlights here and the most shadows here. You know, if this is the sun, we'll have the most highlights here and the most shadows over here. So kind of try always when you color or do any kind of art, you gotta know where the sun is or where your light is, you know? So I'm just going to make this the water bottle, the sun. Okay. So the light's coming this way. So that way we know that we'll do more shadows like over here. And let's start with leaves. Let me get a scratch pad. And I'll start with the leaves. I'm going to pull the yellow greens versus the straight greens. And oh, wow. Okay, there's a lot of yellow green. Okay, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm gonna one, two, three. Four, five, Six, seven, eight, all right, and then the ones that we have left are 173, 172, and 43 and 42, which are a big jump. So I wonder what's going on with those. So I'm going to put them on their own line. And we'll do 42, 43. I don't know if they plan on expanding this line. Those are quite a bit darker. And then these two are quite a bit lighter and they're 172 and 173. So yeah, they're quite a bit lighter. Okay. 172 and 173. All right. So looking at these, you know, we kind of are basically what we need to do is we want to pick, are we going to do the, like the brighter, greener greens, the cooler greens, or are we going to do like the more yellow greens, you know, um, they're all yellow greens, but like these are the most yellow over here. So like we would use G7, GY7, 4, and 5, maybe, yeah, GY7, 4, and 5, I think are the ones that'll work. All right. Four, five, and seven are the three where we'll start. All right. And I'll put the other ones back in their bag for now. And let's see how I do at coloring. Okay. So. All right. Okay, so I am bleeding outside the lines a little bit, but not too bad. You know, that's a function of paper as much as anything else. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a lot of bleeding, but that, again, it could be the paper. And seven. Yeah, a lot of bleeding with these. And then just to be fair, 
and see what's the situation in terms of paper. I actually am gonna pull the sheet for the Copics and I'm gonna try some Copics real quick just to see how much bleeding we're getting. Um, uh, Cause I would rather know sooner rather than later if it's the paper. Or if it's my own technique. Let's not just blame the paper. When we could blame past Catherine. What's this? Four? Yeah, four is the... Oops, chisel. Um, but you can see that they are staying put where I put them when I put them on my desk. So they are, they are good. They are bleeding through. Look how beautiful that is on the back, that watercolor, nice watercolor look. Okay. So let's, let's do, Do some. Let me pull some yellow green. Some greens here. From the Copics. switch back and forth. Okay, so it's it's definitely the paper, at least partially. So, because um, I am getting quite a bit of bleeding with the Copics as well. You know, it's a it's a adult coloring book that costs less than ten dollars. It's not a sketch pad for alcohol markers or a marker pad, so that's not totally surprising. Okay, but yeah, it's definitely the paper. These markers, these are, well, this is a Copic and it, it has a brush tip, but yes, the Ohuhu have a brush tip and that's what I was using. All 
All right. Um, so what I will say is um, what basic, the other tip is a chisel just like on a Copic. Um, so ha coloring with them side by side like this, I'll say, of course, the Copics are, are better at blending, much better at blending. Um, now, are they eight times better at blending? You know, that's the question we have to ask ourselves. See, I also have a better color variety with the Copics, but you know, I can add some darker, darker in here, blend it out. Oh, I bled through. Um, so it's good that I took uh, this out because the paper is going to bleed all the way through. Um, so yeah, what we're, we're definitely getting better, easier blending from the Copics. I don't think it's eight times easier, you know? So I think what I will say is if you've been curious about coloring with alcohol markers, wanted to learn, you know, what's all the hype with Copic, whatever, that this could be a good place to start. But, you know, see how much the Copics bled? And this is, and this is the uh, Ohuhu. So, Copic is bleeding quite a bit as well, so that's not a function, that's a function of the paper. That's not a function of, of the marker. So, hold on, let me, I'm just gonna write. What we're dealing with. So I don't forget. Um, but, you know, this, I mean, this, this is nice. Sure. It gives, it, it blends so much. It gives almost like a watercolor look. This doesn't quite, you can still see lines of demarcation for the colors, but it's not, um, it's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. All right. So, um, so I think think that we're doing okay. I think that we're doing okay. All right, I'm going to set this to the side, uh, the Copic one, and we're going to keep working on our greenery. The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George as a book suggestion. Is it cute?
So the amount that I'm having to blend is definitely oversaturating the paper for sure. And I think I'm going to get more of that on this one. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, one dollar marker. One dollar marker. But yeah, if I want to blend it totally smooth so that there's no, um, no lines at all, I do have to make a pretty big pool of ink. So I don't know. I mean, again, this paper is kind of cheap, so. Now, this is a function of, I think, like the more talented you are, which I am not very good at coloring at all, as I've mentioned, that, you know, the less blending, because the better you'll be at, at putting the colors down in the first place. Well... Actually, I was going to say, but see, this one pooled so much, these two combined in the space between. So actually, maybe I am wrong. Well, I definitely think we have more, a little bit more bleeding um, on the one than the other, but not too, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm going to switch off of Y13 to G Y42 in the Ohuhu markers and see if that helps. I think my initial color may be a little too, a little too dark. Yeah, I think we're going to um, have to, if we really want to do some G1, which one do I want? Four, I think. Yeah, I think we need to run some experiments with a... Uh, with a thicker paper. I mean, it's looking cute, so it's not like it's it's not bad. Switching to a slightly light, lighter, darker green helped for sure.
but yeah, it's definitely harder to blend. Uh, yeah, should I do, I just, it's, this, I'm going to start an ASMR channel where I just color. Hi, I'm Catherine from Catherine Scraps. Today we're going to color sloths. With markers I found on Amazon. <laughs> Candy, Candy's like, no. <laughs> all right. We're doing all right. We're doing okay. We're looking fairly cute. In the end, we're probably going to like the, the back better. Okay. All right. So I think I need to do a little bit of green just right up on here. So now we've got that. All right. All right. What color do you, so we've done our greens. Let's see. So let's do the uh, yellow to go in our flowers. And I'm just going to um, pick a random yellow. and lay it down. I'm gonna go based off of their, what they say. So I'm gonna choose just based on the caps and we'll see how close things are to, the, to, the, to their caps. Barbara Jean wants to send me some things to color for my, for my new coloring ASMR channel. <laughs> or you mean like to print to test the markers. All right. Okay. So yellow blended really nicely. Let's see what color should we do our background? Blue. Let's get, let's just go. Uh, with the chisel. Da, da, da. All right. 
Okay, so that was a uh, BG6. So we're just gonna find something in the BG family that I can blend out. Sure, let's go with this one. Oh, see now this one's a lot darker than it appears based on its lid. All right, so BG4. So here's, here's an example. This is BG6. It's even quite a bit darker than BG, or this is BG8 right here. That's this like edge right here. It's, it looks lighter, but it's not. That, that happens sometimes with less expensive markers. So the question to, oh, to color and send back. Okay, so let's see how we can, how we can blend out this, if we can blend out this edge. The color and send back. Yeah. I think we may have messed up here. And by we, I mean you guys, of course. And where you messed up was in trusting me to color anything and have it look cute. <laughs> Since I'm not that good at coloring. Ah. But I did warn you that I'm not good at coloring, so. But this is just proof that you don't have to be good at something to have fun doing it. It's not, it's not totally terrible. It's doing okay. I mean, it's not going to look blended, but. We probably need to put one in between them. So, um. Candy says that Michael's is not going to sell chows anymore. And in some places in the U.S., they're clearancing them for 97 cents. So that's that's Copic's like budget marker, the chow. So if you want to experiment with Copic's, you can get them for the same price as these. Yeah, we're going to have to use the blender. Well, and I might not, and instead of using the blender, I might use, Renee's says you have to use the blender to pull color to the lighter shade. Yes. And I might even use a, a marker in between the two of them if I can find it. So like, let me see what my BG colors are. Oh, they're all super dark. Great. So this is the one that I have. That's the, this one I already know doesn't work. Let's try seven. No, see, they're all, look how close they all are. That one might be okay. So that's a possibility. Uh, they're all, they're all so, they're all so dark. <laughs> they're all so dark. Ugh. So this is, you know, this is partially what I get for not 
swatching them first, you know, I mean, I guess I could take some responsibility for this, but I'm also going to make a slight complaint, which is that the blue gray is BG and the blue green is BG as well. So like that's a blue gray. It was not so easy to tell. All right, there we go. We're getting, it's getting better. I mean, does it look good? No. Did I promise you wouldn't learn anything? Yes. All right. So we're done. I do, I like watercolor because it's, I feel like it's much more forgiving because um, you can kind of like erase it a little bit by pulling it up with more water. I'm going to give up on the background a little bit. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've done, you know, sort of what we can with the This does have a colorless blender too, by the way. That does come with one. So, all right. Let's see, what are we gonna see? It, it's now like, cause I'm just using so much ink, it's all pulling through the paper. I like watercolor, especially Derwent. Yeah, watercolor is kind of more where my comfort zone is. I have Copics cause like way, way, oh, I did a, a, a dye card club where we colored um, each month. The, the sloth is still smiling, so it can't be too bad. Well, I'm having fun, which is really all that matters. I mean, I hope you guys are also having fun, but you know what? That's the, that's why it's like, it's color to relax. You know, you're not necessarily trying to make masterpieces here. All right. So we're going to move on from the background. Let's see if I can do this sloth. And the, uh, let me open up the skin tone pack.
All right, so this is YR95 from the uh, skin tone set. So let's let's warm it up, maybe if I can get. All right, let me just let them start bleeding into each other a little bit and then work on blending. Blending. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right. Yeah, pencils that you can wet, use with water, like watercolors, are great. I Yeah, I've always liked watercolor. And also just, um, you can just take your Tim Holtz um, Distress Ink Pads and you can... Um, You can um, stamp them off on an ink pad. And just wet those with water and use them. And you can use those as watercolor because it's a water-based ink. So if you want to experiment with coloring with water, that's a way to do it. Or stamp it on your mat, even. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So we want why are like a... A nice something for his face. Sloths, I think sloths and llamas are equally the thing. If you're the kind of person, you know, I think most people who like sloths also like llamas. I don't think it's like a, um, I don't think it's an exclusive. Like people who liked llamas are now into sloths. Because this book has a sloth and a llama. So I think you can be a sloth person and a llama person. Which one of these is the light one? Rawr. This is what I get for not labeling them all.
really, really, really light sort of yellow is what I need. Like a really, really light yellow. Am I going to get a really light yellow? Is that a thing that exists in my life? No, gonna have to use pink, I think. Okay. All right, we've got our little slot. Let's do purple flowers. Oh, you do? Okay, so let's do some kind of purple flowers here. Cause we don't, I don't see purple flowers. I don't see purple that much in crafting. All right. Yeah, alcohol markers bleed. That's true. We start watching Queen of the South. That's kind of like, um, you know, you have to be willing to hate everyone, <laughs> you know, it's like everyone sucks kind of deal. And just agree that some people are like worse than others. So there's some bad guys that you want to lose, you know, more than others. Um, so library cards for fees are, um, I'm getting a question that I mentioned one last week. I did. Um, I mentioned a few, uh, value is going to depend on what you want. Um, the cheapest one that I know of is the Fairfax County Public Library. That's Fairfax County, Virginia. That one's 27 a month. Allison says, sloths are just so happy and chilled out and adorable. I've never seen a grumpy sloth. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. They're just, they're all, they're all ready to go. It's probably what happens when you get to nap most of the, t most of the day. You get to be happy and chilled out. All right. We're doing okay. I mean, the background was a fail, but whatever, you know, <laughs> we're doing all right. Our sloth is pretty cute, you know. He's he's okay. I think I pulled all these except for R21. I don't know. I'm going to have to find a way to like have them all together. Or maybe yeah. No, 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 I know. R18. Okay. What color should we make our letters? What color should we make our cup? What are we gonna do? <laughs> My son is napping a lot through this lockdown and he's still grumpy. Let's make a yellow cup. Like a kind of goldenrod.
Yeah, see, look at the difference on the caps, and then that's these two colors right here. So this is, a, this is one where you'd want to sit down and swatch them all when you first get them because you're not going to be able to tell based on their caps how they are in terms of... Okay, you want to do... Let's do... All right, you want to do the love, like a love colored. Now we just have to find a pink. So coloring, but yeah, coloring, you could get watercolor pencils and color with those. You just put the color where you want it and then you use water to blend it all together at the end. All right, let's see, I love, I still haven't found something to go with my yellow here. <sighs> Ugh, gross. Maybe our cup won't be yellow. Oh, there we go. Oops, I don't know about this. Ah, I'm gonna ruin it again. See, that was supposed to uh, be my light yellow, but like, I don't have a light yellow, so I don't know what we're going to do here. I think we may be in big trouble with a cup. Unless, you know what, we're just going to roll with it. We're just going to roll with it. Was that, was that? This will be the main cup color and we'll use this one to darken it where we need to darken it. All right. Ay, 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 ay. is going to take 5,000 years. But what can you do? What can you do when you're bad at coloring, you know?
just got to relax and say, I'm bad at coloring, but I have fun coloring, so who cares? It's not like Fran is going to look at the back of it. Funny. So, yeah. As with all crafting, coloring takes longer than we think it should. Uh, seriously. It definitely does. Renee says, when I mess up with blending, I add tiny dots of the same shade. Oh, that's a good idea. I've always wanted to get better at um, markers, but I also then like don't color with markers that much because I'm not that good at it. Uh, in terms of like on my projects, you know, because I'm much better with just ink watered down than I am with a marker. So maybe I just need to make myself sit down and color all the time. You know, So, I'm going to get our cup looking okay. Our goal is to get it okay. We're not going to worry about the background. That's a lost cause. Just trying to be fast now. Because I've been coloring with these markers long enough that I've got some of the issues. One is I do think they bleed more than the Copics, even though this paper is pretty prone, prone to bleeding. What we can do is we can test it on this book, which has coated paper side by side I do think that this color is working well for the cup I'm happy with it and we can darken it up I thought it was going to be too dark but it's not too bad so we can you know we can add shading with a darker yellow <laughs> thank you allison all right so yeah we definitely let me just finish so at least the cup is finished all right okay but um, so the first is the bleeding. I do think they bleed more than Copics. Like I said, we'll test them side by side on this book, which has coated paper. Or actually, I have marker paper. We'll test them on marker paper to be 100% fair. And um, what I'll do is, in fact, let me just do it right now. I'm going to grab a sheet of marker paper. And I'm going to stamp... 
uh, just the favorite photo stamp with the uh, Memento Tuxedo Black, which is hopefully not dried out. I think it is dried out. It's, it's good enough. I'm going to stamp uh, this and we'll see how later on we'll do um, color in the heart. You know, we'll do one with a red Copic and one with a red whatever. We'll see how, which one bleeds more. And let me just mark uh, Copic. Oh, hoo hoo. All right, and then I'm gonna set this aside to dry. And while I'm finishing this, that'll dry. All right, bring the cup back. Maybe I should finish the background and not be a whiny baby. You know? Should I just have the courage of my convictions and finish my background? Nah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for letting me off the hook. You get the gold star for today's chat. Okay. Oh, wow. Whoops. <laughs> okay. So let's take a darker gold and create some shadows with it. All right. So I'll um, use this darker gold to create some shadows. All right, just want to, did I buy all the colors that exist of the Ohuhu? I bought the 120 pack and the, um, and the skin tone pack. So I, that may, I don't know if that is all the colors that exist. It may be. Um, but I think they have more colors than that. All right, so there we go. So that's the cup. All right, let's finish. Um, I'm just gonna use the same colors that I used for the love for espresso.
Oh, Judy is on the third flip-flop book. So Judy's reading all the flip-flops. And they're all very different, she says. You think this great work of art should be a prize in the next giveaway? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe I'll start giving away my crappy arts. I did give away once um, sketches of your family and they were all stick figures. Uh, that was way long ago. I don't remember if you were here when I did that. <laughs> I did do original sketches of your family and they were all stick figures. And they, they had like, the girl ones had bows on them and the, the you know, like it was, that's what it, and then I wrote peop, the people's names beneath them. I think maybe Annette got those. I mean, this was years, years, years ago. And it was because I had just done a book of my family, but I didn't have any photos printed out. So I just drew stick figures to represent all my family members in the book. Allison got, or no, Alligator Book got a dragonfly with a Faber Castell set. Was it a good dragonfly? Or was, oh no, it wasn't. It was the like deranged, horrible dragonfly. I remember that. Oh my gosh. It was the like, it that, oh, that dragonfly needed so much help. <laughs> I remember it now. Oh my gosh. Hilarious. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's me. I've been nailing prizes for years. <laughs> it had like crazy eyes. Um, yeah, that was another Catherine Scraps original. <laughs> or Catherine Scraps original. Oh, man. Yeah. Our book is a mystery. I thought it was, it seemed murder mystery-ish from the, uh, from the, uh, description. I was actually thinking about making next month, like, cozy mysteries instead of um, his ain't classical fiction. I'm just coloring the black, the, the background while I try and figure out um, what colors I wanna make the rest of the cup letters. I think, The background is growing on me um, in the sense that, you know, I, I don't love it, but I don't hate it as much as I did before. <laughs> um, So the blue background is, uh, it's coming along. All right, there we go. We've got a background now. It's okay. All right. So we're going to do the lid next. And I'm going to use a warm, warm grays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the warm grays that I have. No, I'm going to use blue grays. Just, just kidding. I'm going to use blue grays. And I 
I'm gonna just um, see what I've got. Three, three, and this is nine. Okay. So I'm just gonna do the cup lid with Okay, with uh, this cool gray, this, I'm gonna do, yeah, the whole lid with the cool gray. Again, this is one of those things where very few things in nature are white, very few things in nature are black. So usually when you're coloring using a dark gray, uh, for black and a light gray for uh, white can work really well. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, let's see. What to do for I can't espresso how much I love you. All right, let's do a I'm just going to do blue for the espresso all right now how much let's do i can't and you will do purple and maybe we'll do like more magenta than purple Mm. Okay. No classical, f no classical fiction. You couldn't finish Caesar. All right. Maybe we should just not try to learn stuff, you know. We can just read light and fluffy books for the rest of the year. All right, that worked okay. Let's do it again with the U. Yeah, you could try the smaller sets. Yeah, if you're curious about the Ohuhu markers, get this, get like a small set and see how you like them. Um... Summer is just too hot. Candy says, we learn something from you every week. We don't want our brains too full. And Pat says, summer is too hot for heavy books. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we just need how much. That just needs a color. I'll just do purple again. I like how the purple looks. Well, you're not late because it's a surprise show. 
So whenever you get here is, is the right time. All right, we did it. We colored a whole page. Ta-da, we colored a whole page. We made it all the way through. The background, you know, is I think our weakest point. But I think we're doing, we're doing all right. I think we're doing all right. So this is our other page that we have to do with the Copics. <laughs> Unless you wanna skip the Copics and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Actually, it doesn't look totally terrible. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. All right. All right, so let's go to the side-by-side. -side. Yeah, people who can do large spaces with... Um, with like backgrounds have my okay let's do a heart so let's do and I'm gonna blend it until I'm happy with it Judy, I finally bought French Curves. I finally remembered. All right, so we use two colors. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the, try to find the Copics closest to these that I have. Let's see. I think RV twenty five. Oof, mine's empty. Oh, come on. Really? Ugh, I think it's the right color too, but it's but it's empty. So that's annoying. Yeah, I'm testing out markers. We may have to just go with red, lipstick red. And okay. Okay. I'm going to use these two.
All right. Okay. Let's, oh, hey, Tiny. You coming out? You coming out to say hi? All right, I'm gonna set this. Hey, buddy. Hi. Oh, gonna stretch? Yep, stretch in. Yeah, the desk is messy. The desk is messy. She's like, I can't walk. <laughs> All right, I'm going to um, tr try and zoom in on this. <laughs> She's like, what is happening? So that was her coming out of her new, um, her new, There we go. Okay. I think we've got it. Yeah, you keep yours. You keep yours because I finally, they were dusty. Oh no. Yeah, I finally, I literally just bought them yesterday. So, I mean, the, now it's way zoomed in. All right, so it's way zoomed in. Okay, now we can see side by side the Copic versus the Ohuhu. Now, one thing I want to point out is it looks like right here the Copic got out of the lines a lot. Um, that was more like incompetence on my part. You can see how on the side on the on this side it didn't bleed at all that's this side i saw myself get out of the lines so this is me being bad at coloring but you see here there's nothing outside the lines that's more typical of the copic the ohuhu on the other hand i will say some of this bleeding is down to the marker but you will see that when we're using them on marker paper they don't really bleed that much at all either so um yeah um, I do think the blending's a little better on the Copic uh, than on the Ohuhu. Like I said, I really struggled to get rid of any kind of harsh lines. You can see right there that there's like m more of a line from the red where the red didn't quite blend. But it's not like it's bad at blending. So, you know, it's still good at blending. So it still was able to be blended no trouble really um and while it bled a like a teensy scooch more than the um than the copic um i don't it i don't think it really bled bled like i wouldn't say oh these markers bleed a lot you know so what i would say also is that just in person the copic does look a little bit better but the Ohuhu does not look bad. You know, so again, this is an $8 marker. This is a $1 marker. So um, does this look eight times better? You know, Monica's saying I might try these instead of Spectrum Noir because of the price point. That's a good point. Like if you're already not, if you're using inexpensive markers already like Spectrum Noir, um, and these did beat Spectrum Noir in the video that I watched. Um, and have as someone who's colored with Spectrum Noir and who's colored with these, I would say I probably like these better than Spectrum Noir. Uh, for sure. Like Spectrum Noir for, for starters has the problem with you have to switch to brush nibs because they don't, at least when I was using them, they didn't come with brush nibs. Um, I don't have my Spectrum Noir markers anymore. I gave them away uh, to a school. So I can't do a side-by-side -side versus Spectrum Noir. Um, 
and of course, if the, yeah, uh, be in the chat, they're saying you're not going to be coloring with them side by side. Side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And oh, hoo hoo would look just fine. Like this would look fine if it wasn't next to this, which looks better, you know. Renee says she gave away her Spectrum Noir too. Yeah. So what the bottom line is, I would say, is, and let me pull, let me pull in now, since we have a close up, I'm going to pull in the leaves so you can see a close up of the leaves and how much the leaves bled. All right. So we've got Copic on the left and Ohuhu on the right. So again, you can see with the blending that this is Copic, this is Ohuhu. Um, you can see that we have bleeding on both of them and that's because of the paper, that we have less bleeding on the Copic than we do on the Ohuhu and that there's better blending on the Copic than on the Ohuhu, but neither of them, like the Ohuhu doesn't look bad. Um, did they compare the Nuvo markers? You know, I, I skipped like the majority of the video and I went all the way to the final eight and the Nuvo were not in the final eight. Neither were Spectrum Noir actually. They didn't make it that far. There were some big names that didn't make it as far as you would think like Spect uh, Prismacolor didn't make it very far either. So, so again, here you see, you know, is the, is the blending better over here? Yes. Better blending with less bleeding, but you know, is it the end of the world? No. Like, I mean, this is really, <laughs> now you can see up close how bad my coloring is. My takeaway is that paper is more important than marker. Absolutely. In terms of blending and bleeding. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, cause this is marker paper. This is the spectrum noir paper. So, um, this is definitely paper was that was made for markers. Spectrum noir's paper is fantastic. I love their paper. So, um, yeah. So what I'll say is, if you just want to like experiment with alcohol markers and maybe like do some adult coloring books to like chillax and you don't have anything at all, then I think these would be a great start. I think that these would be a, oh, you got hiccups. I think that these would be a great start. Um, So, and they, uh, I put links in the video description to the sets that I used, but they have other sets, like they have a 48, they have a 72, you know, you don't have to buy the full set, but they're right about a dollar a marker. So, um, so yeah, I mean, they're really, they're really surprising quality as someone who's used the Kaiser craft markers, which I don't, did not like at all and the Spectrum Noir, I do like them better than both of those. Like if I'm comparing the Ohuhu marker and where it lands, it definitely lands closer to Copic than it lands to Spectrum Noir or, um, or Kaisercraft. If they even still make markers, I don't remember. Um, but, uh, yeah. So if you have Copics, do you need these? No, you don't, don't buy them. You know, you don't need them. Not really. Um, but if you have Copics and you have someone like a younger person who wants to color with you, but you don't want to give $8 markers to a younger person, but you want to start teaching them how to do this kind of coloring, this might be a good, a good option. So this might be a good option. You know, you do need to swatch them, um, uh, because their colors are not like, Repres their cap colors are not representative of, of the colors that they are in reality. So that's definitely something that you will need to do. You will need to do swatches. Um, you can't just look at the cap and go. But 
Um, that's not the end of the world. A lot of people swatch their Copics too. So, you know, um, even though their lids are pretty accurate because they want to know exactly what it looks like on the paper that they use the most. So, you know, swatching's not unheard of and it's not the end of the world. Copic give you a headache. Oh, like from the fumes. All right, so now you can see my messy coloring. <laughs> Look, no one looks this closely, okay? <laughs> no one looks this closely. <laughs> All right, let me zoom out. All right. It's an impressionistic. Yeah. Um, pear tree treasures for the Copic holder. Pear tree treasures for the Copic holder. It's impressionistic. Exactly. It's exactly. That's what it is. Monica Partridge, who's in the chat, she makes them. Get it. Because it's a partridge in a pear tree. Do you get it? You get it? <laughs> so she's. So she's. Um, we. I guess we all know what her favorite day of Christmas is. Um, but yeah, they're not bad. They're not bad. Um, they're not bad. In fact, they're good. I, I'll say they're good. You know, they're good. Not only are they not bad, but I mean, they're, I mean, they're definitely solidly not bad, but they're, they're good. They, they perform really well. And I think on nicer paper, we would have gotten something really nice. So, uh, I think what I would do personally, what I, what I might do is I might just scan all of the remaining sheets in my book so that I can print them on stamp paper, on marker paper, before I go and color some more. Um, however, comma, I'm not, I don't hate what we did. I don't hate what we did. Um, the link to the markers is in the video description. So, um, or do you mean the link to Monica's holder? But yeah, I put, I managed to put all the links in the video description today. So, um, but yeah, it's, um, oh, who, who, uh, you can go on, just go on, you can, meh. let me see if I can get a link. Monica's posting the link on Facebook, so I'll get the link in the chat for Monica's holder, and then I'll post in the chat as well the, from the video description, all the different links. But, um, yeah, I, okay, here's the Ohuhu markers first. But like I said, you can, if you're watching on mobile and you don't see the video description, then you can always switch between the chat and the video description and you can see, but I posted it in the chat and then, um, let me see, let me go to Facebook and grab Monica's link and post it in the chat and I'll put it in the video description as well. So it'll be there on the recording. Facebook. Um... And there is a link to the Facebook group as well. So, oh, I'm faster than Monica. She hasn't done it yet. <laughs> Monica, where are you? Wow, Monica. <laughs> wow, Monica. <laughs> Everyone's 
like, wow. Monica is too slow. All right, let's see if I can find it faster than she can post it. All right. Okay, found her website. Now the question is, can I find the thingy? Maybe, does, is there a searcher? No, there's not a searcher. Maybe it's in stamp styles and embossing. What do you guys think? Or in tools, trimmers, and die cuts? No. There is not a searcher. Of course not. Is it not there? Why? I can't find it. <laughs> is there a searcher? Okay. There's no searcher. Oh, there's a searcher. I found the searcher, guys. There is a searcher. It's just like way off to the side. It's in a weird spot. Okay, um, marker holder. Okay, let's see. I searched for marker holder and markers are coming up, but no marker holder. All right, let's go back to Facebook and see if Monica's got it. <laughs> Uh, let me Google Fair Tree Treasures Copic Holder. Nope. I mean, this is a Google failure. It's not a. <laughs> <laughs> Now my Facebook group won't load. It's like, it's not even letting me look at the Facebook group because it doesn't want Monica to win. Like it doesn't want Monica to be able to, to post her link. <laughs> Why is it gone? Um, so the, I thought it was called the marker thingy. Oh, is that my problem? I'm not searching for it. Okay, let me just search for marker and see if it comes up. Sort by, let's sort by price high to low. It's probably more expensive than markers, right? No, it's not. It's not on here. It's not on here. But stencils are on here. So there's that. Um, let me just search for the word Copic in case it's under Copic holder. No. So, Mon just just so you know, Monica just opened her official store. So, growing pains, everyone. So she's she's moving. She's moving to a official store. So she'll. I'm sure she'll find a link. If not, just go yell at her on Facebook. Just be like, Monica, I want to buy your marker thing. We are making it so hard. You know. And call it the marker thing. <laughs> Monica says my belly hurts. Good thing I can laugh about it. <laughs> Epic failure. Oh, <laughs> marker thingy. Look for marker thingy. All right, I'll Google thingy and see what happens. In Canada, do you guys spell thingy with a Y or an IE? Well, there's nothing under thingy with a Y. So maybe it's an IE. Nope, not there either. Well, eventually I'm sure it'll be in the store under Copic marker thingy. So, um, but Pear Tree Treasures, that's what it is. I'm going to put the link to her store so that, you know, you can, you can at least contact her and tell her you want one. 
and hope for, she said she's going to correct it and add it to the store. So maybe later, later the <laughs> it will be there. But um, yeah, so so there you go. So if you want a Copic marker thingy, um, I'll put a I'll put it in the video description. Let's see. Um, I'll just put it under pear tree treasures and then hopefully. marker holder and I'll put her website and if it's not in there you know hopefully it'll be there by the time this is posted okay all right so um I think I'm done for now but here's our here's our sloth on our on our coffee cup Um, alligator book, uh, she lives near the border. So I believe when the border opens up, she can, it can have USA shipping. Monica, you can correct me if that's incorrect. Um, but once the border between, um, them are open, I think she, uh, between us and Canada are open. I think she can offer us shipping. Yeah. Okay. So she says she'll have USA shipping for sure. Okay. So yeah. So there, so it would be U.S. shipping if you're in the U.S. All right. Well, I had fun hanging out with you. It was a nice relaxing afternoon, just coloring stuff, being somewhat mediocre uh, about coloring. Oh, and she says the prices on her website are in Canadian money. So keep the exchange in mind, U.S. people. So you'll have to... Um, do the maths. You'll have to do the maths, but just, just know it'll cost less than what the website shows. It's cause that's the Canadian, it's Canadian dollar on the website. All right, everyone. I will be back tomorrow at 2 PM USA time, not USA time. Cause USA has multiple times 2 PM Eastern USA time. The East Coast, Miami, New York, DC, 2 p.m. Eastern USA time. I'll be back. And also at 9 p.m. Eastern USA time, we're going to be continuing the Catch a Tag Remastered album. Um, so yeah, here are the oh hoo hoo markers. I don't know what we discovered other than someone who's kind of mediocre at coloring was able to use these markers to make a kind of mediocre drawing. So um, with that being said, um, yeah, if you're kind of mediocre at coloring or think you or haven't tried coloring, go ahead and start with these. You know, you don't have to start with Copics if you want to get into alcohol markers. I think this would be a good starting set. So, um, yeah, check them out if you're interested, if you've been thinking about getting into coloring with these kind of markers. And, um, yeah, also make sure you scan your coloring books and put them on marker paper so that they don't become a uh, sloppy impressionistic <laughs> Monet of a, of a drawing. So thanks so much for joining me. Uh, I hope you, uh, learned something. If not, you know, I, I promised you wouldn't. So, I mean, you got, you know, as advertised. So have a great afternoon and I'll see you next time. Bye now.